Uh, we have a team at XIV. My name is Adam Lewin. and today with me is Parker Dirks, Parshall Patel, Anki Patel, Josh Owens, and Peter Tuller. We are the IoT Robot Mason. Your tuition today is being spent on learning why we are doing what we're doing, how we did what we're doing, how we got to where we are, a dank demonstration, and also where our product is going in the future. Next. So, uh, next. In, the, in the year 2012, Microsoft stopped supporting VPL. So, next. The same decision that ASU made was to switch to MATLAB, which was the only stable platform that we could use for FST100. Next slide. So, to remedy this unstable platform, Dr. Inong Chen devises ASU VIPL, which is a carbon copy of Microsoft VPL. Now, the problem here is that FSC 100 is still a mess because the students don't know what they're coding and just simply follow the instructions. So what they needed was an elite task force of coding ninja who could help them and develop tools for them and so they know exactly what they're doing. What they really needed was us. <laughs> I'll be passing this off to Anki for the design decision. So while well, last semester we had some involvement with the hardware and things like this, and this semester is mostly the entire web application. We use vanilla version of HTML5 and JavaScript <coughs> and framework. Um, CSS formatting can help ensure that the first few students can locate all the relevant uh, features and values that they modify in order to get working for them. Um, our web application basically represents a client, direct client to client architecture. Um, any student can fire up the uh, May simulator and also the Bitful controller. And multiple students can do that, and each will communicate uh, over a local area network or even on the same computer. Um, tools we use uh, were NetBeans for development um, and GitHub for our version control. We're just going to talk about the DOM. Um, so, we use JavaScript for the back end of our website. Um, this really met our requirement that Dr. Chen had um, where we had to have the website compatible on all browsers. So currently, you can pull it up on a phone, tablet, any browser, and have it work without a visual data to Um We did this basically by, we use JavaScript by calling events to the DOM, which is the document object model, um, which is basically all the HTML5 elements and their properties. And JavaScript allows us to, real, in real time, change their elements and properties based on what Bipple sends us. Um, we also use animations to move the robot using JavaScript and HTML5 canvas. We use make white to erase the previous frame and draw a rectangle to draw the next frame. Um, for the frame rate, we use the set timeout between frames. So you can see on the left, it's a slow motion version of what all the functions are doing. And then we use 40 milliseconds to get it up to an actual robot speed and have it work properly. And I'll pass it off to Parker to talk about the movement of the robot. All right. Um, one of the most important things we were taking care of in our simulator was that we had to actually simulate the movement and animate what a robot would actually do throughout the maze, which is a lot more complex than it sounds. So I'm um, a simple diagram. <laughs> like so basically, what we did, we created a state machine that would tell us which way the robot was facing within within the maze, within our simulation, and it based on which way it pays you to be making movements left off, left, right, forward, backwards, based on what you receive from ASU Bipple. Um, and also we had to make a few rotations within the maze, and all we were confined to was 90 degrees, but we left it open so in the future we could make you know 30 degree turns or, or less increments. We just created and accumulated a huge track of time of how long the commands would be sent to it. Um, also another thing we had to implement was sensors for, for a simulator. Because the actual robot has distance sensor, push sensor on us, so we had to simulate that with our maze um, with our simulator. Um, so we gave the option on our website to add simulators before you do that and start running the program. So you can put sensors on the front, back, left, right, or wherever you want to put them. And then there's a touch sensor you can put on the front as well. And we basically just attack the distance to the wall the maze and send that back to you as you could And we passed off to Adam and just talk a little bit. The way JSON works is you put a class as you were to do an object uh, programming, so put it into an array, and then cast it as a string. That string is then next slide, parsed by using any sort of library, inner library that can uh, handle JSON or <coughs> have a string. Therefore, all you have to do is move any piece of sensor or motor value and then parse it, and then you instantly have uh, values towards that. I'm going to pass this to 
Josh for our timeline. All right, so in the beginning, we got off to a little bit of a late start because we had to switch sponsors. But once we started working with Dr. Chen, we quickly got a prototype more of a basic movement on the robot. And then we worked with the different motor sensors and getting all those to work together in tandem. And then we went on to simplify them, get the side detection working, connected to mobile and other computers. And then we worked on turning the custom mazes and sending the data through JSON. Um, in the past couple months, we've done performance upgrades, working on a mobile version of the site and upgrading the CSS a little bit. And the past month has been a little bit of visual cleanup, some more code uh, cleanup, some multiple mazes, and creating the manual exercises for the FC100 students. Next, we'll be going to our <coughs> and we'll be off to Peter. Uh, as I'm bringing this up, this, things go really fast, so I recommend just look at the big text and enjoy the show. <coughs> oh boy. This is the ASU ILT Maze Simulator, which is done in vanilla versions of JavaScript and HTML5. We can input up to two sensors using the touch or ultrasonic in all four directions. We can also connect to a different device or local host by using web signs. We can also change the maze that we have based on four templates that we have, or download all four of them and edit any one of them to upload any edited version of them. So, let's see this in action. As you can see, we want to be able to have dynamic drawing for the mesas. You saw in the video, we have templates that we can upload. Uh, we want the users to actually create the mesas themselves, edit it, take out walls and such. Uh, we also want the physical robot to <coughs> interface with dynamic animation. So the robot is actually getting data from its sensors and it's painting uh, walls uh, based on what it sees. And then on, addition, and on top of that, we want to be able to maintain the documentation since this was a work in progress and con uh, concurrent with the current FC100 class. A lot of the documentation uh, was done maybe a little bit hastily, so we want to coalesce it into a single 
file uh, very coherent exercises so the FSC 100 user, or students can use it, as well as future capstone teams that iterate on this project. And we also want to visually update uh, the website. You saw it's a little bit retro, kind of like a 1998 looking website, uh, so we want to make it uh, look a little bit nicer. Uh, for our lessons learned, the uh, big one is obviously that we want to make sure that our sponsor and our team are on the same page. They have one idea of the project, and we are coming in from a slightly different angle, so just making sure we have frequent meetings. Uh, the biggest thing, though, was that uh, Big O actually applies. The actual efficiency of our algorithms greatly affects how the website performance uh, runs for the user. Uh, the one particular algorithm, when we fundamentally cut it down uh, to make it run better, everything was so much nicer. The robot ran smoother. Uh, it wasn't as blocky. Um, also, that we can uh, uh, make models. We can pre-plan our work, make a model of it, so we don't actually have to have the physical product in hand to tell if it's going to work or not. And then also, uh, there are a lot of lessons gained uh, working within our own team, as well as with other teams uh, under Dr. Chen that are working on the FC100 class. Any questions? How does your program, uh, does it simulate how poor the device is going to be when uh, trying to detect things? or so like, um, for example, the, the real ones in the FSC, that they don't sense walls very well sometimes. Uh, can you, can, uh, did you put that into account or anything like that? Was it like perfect sensors? Uh, we did not put that into account. Um, and uh, we actually, they, they have new sensors now for the FC100 robots. Uh, the same, I don't know if you guys took 438, but the same uh, ultrasonic sensors are being used for the robots. Uh, and those tend to work pretty well. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. Thank you.